Welcome back to the Texas Truck Channel. I'm Craig. And I'm Brian. And we've got a little update for you slash it's been a, we've put some miles on this thing, Brian. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah we have. So we got it. We want to talk about those, some good and bad. Uh, start us off with, uh, what, do you, what do you have for us? Well, here's the deal. We're at just shy of 10,000 miles at the time of filming this video. By the time Craig and I meet again to do a recording, we'll be over 10K. So now is the time to do it. We're going to cover in this video what we like about it, what we don't like about it, what we've done to it, and what we've learned over 10,000 miles. So that's what we're doing here. And I want to start out, Craig, with my first positive. The biggest surprise to me that I basically made fun of prior to being in this community is just that, the community. I've learned through the aftermarket, this thing is so new and there's already people clamoring to do things to it and great companies like Calories LED that we work with constantly. Those guys are awesome. We went to Toyota Jamboree. This thing was a rock star out there. We put rooftop tents on it. And it's just the whole community just backs itself. Even though it's ignorant sometimes, it's such a positive thing and there's no ducks. I love that. Well, Brian, I hate to say anything bad about what I about this thing because look, we put a lot of miles on it, which means we have to have liked it some such. Sure. You've heard us talk ad nauseum about the T24A FTS because we're gonna see it everywhere and we're already seeing it everywhere. Engine wise, it's fine. Power wise, powertrain, way better Whoa, than the previous yeah. generation. Yeah. It just destroys it. Stop debating that. There's no question. I didn't expect it to be this unrefined feeling. Mm. So it's a little thrashy. It's a little noisy. It's a little uh, tractory. Uh, we saw that on like the first video we filmed on this thing. And mainly we realized it's this. There's no um, hood dampening there. The good news is we had the Hybrid Max Platinum Limited. 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 And it's all, all of a sudden became way more refined. So maybe yeah. it's that simple and that yeah. great community of support will tell us what part number here pretty soon and we can just order it. <laughs> there you go. Brian, what's something you don't like that you uh, run into? Okay, come on back. From here back. Yeah, yeah, it's a pickup. It's a pickup, you're right. But it's also a composite pickup bed. Yeah, and they've man, been doing that. They've been doing it. That's not new, I know. But I'll tell you right now, this is the first time we've owned or spent long periods of time with composite beds. I know they last, I know they work. I'm sorry to tell you, I just kind of prefer a metal one. Is that silly? Maybe. Here's one of the things that makes me feel that way. This thing? Granted, I know it's a first production run, and it's not that bad right now, but in the hot summer, this thing curls a little bit. I don't love that, and it gives me a feeling of, like, not solidity coming to the bed. Something that has really helped with that, because we've had these on loan that rattle a bunch, the factory bed liner. I know some people have complained about the quality of it. I'm fine with it, and it has minimized rattles internally, big time. Also, we've added a piece of blue painter's tape behind this, which stopped a rattle right here. So let's move on to what we've done to make the bed better. And it's starting with these billet tie-downs. These are from billettiedowns.com these guys send them to us we are not being paid to say this but we've used them and they're awesome charbonia designs the parent company they're made in the usa you can get them anodized in multiple colors they just came out with orange we've got red to accent or they're silver. beefy dude these things are strong so i had actually a two four-wheelers in the back of this truck well kid ones and these were so rock solid it's phenomenal and they fit in the factory rail really well billet tie downs down here that have a clip they clip up and down, which is pretty cool, and they move 360. That's really nice. Actually, I mean, that is sturdy. That, that is, is super yeah. strong, and it's kind of cool that that stuff's already out here for this. Additionally, we left one of the mounting brackets on, but we had a mid-rack from Cali Rays on here, which gives you such versatility. I just love that there is so much you can do with it. That's a positive. Tell me something you like about it, Craig. All right, something I like, Brian, is uh, not the wheel. Oh, the wheel's okay. great. I, I love like the wheel. I love the like steel. Yeah. The tire, Brian, I know tire, well, KO3, we were really nervous and skeptical of some of the claims of the KO3. We right. thought, well, the tread pattern doesn't look as aggressive. Is it just not gonna be as good? It doesn't look as aggressive, you're right. Fair. All the claims from BF Goodrich of that, well, it's gonna be better in the wet and it's gonna be just as quiet and all those things. But there's no way it can just be just as good in the dirt, rock, and grip better in the wet and not make any more noise. There's no way. You can't do all those things. Yeah. It's just not possible. I'm here to tell you it is possible and the KO3s <laughs> are good. Yeah. And I would definitely consider them, although I still like the looks of the KO2s. Agreed. Time for something good on your end. Oh, I got plenty. Come on, let's go. It's right behind you, dude. You walked right into it. Right here, the side rails. We've actually, behind baseball, this has been in our shop for, what, a month and a half? Yeah, a little and bit. And I finally just installed them. They're from Cali Rays LED. I'll be honest, they're kind of expensive, but they're only $200 more than the factory Predator step. And oh. they are so much better they're than way that. way better than so the Predator So much step. better than that. Go, they, go watch our video where we threw that one away. Yeah, we threw it in that pasture over there. It was <laughs> awful. So unlike the Predator step, this is an actually a protected rail. You can lift the entire truck from this because it's not cab mounted. It's, show them down here, Craig. It's yeah, it is framed. mounted to the frame. It is actually pinned between so you have a backer plate and a through bolt you've got three big through bolts and you've got i think 12 extra bolts tying into factory threaded holes it's incredible it acts as a step it protects the body and i just think that this is if you're actually going to offer this thing you're not going just to rei you're going to do some dirt stuff you're going to want something like this to keep this 
belly protected. Really cool fire product. I like that a lot. All right, Brian, let's kind of end it. Um, let's do some little updates. Just kind of 10,000 miles overall overview. What have yeah. we learned owning this vehicle for that long? There's a little quibbles and stuff here and there. Sure. What are some things we've learned? Let's start back here. The biggest complaint on the internet is that, oh, the back is too small. And look, it looks really small. It's not very big. But I will say in a pinch, I've had, I've got two young kids. I've got an eight and a five-year-old in car seats. I've had a family of four and a dog in this, and we're all quite comfortable driving. I've realized that you need to put the seat forward a little bit. I've also realized that even at my height, I don't want it back all the way. That's how big the rail goes. And so that's what I've learned here is that this cab is so comfortable. It's full-size truck comfy. And so you get in here and you've got a seat that's super supportive. You've got plenty of leg room. And on top of that, you have what I think, Craig, is the best steering wheel in the segment. Oh, it's a great steering wheel. It is super comfy. In fact, we had the limited on loan last week. I was like, Craig, this wheel is great. And he goes, yeah, it's the same as ours. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about it. So that's been a real positive to me. Brian, something I've learned in here is the ergonomics are just good. I know you kind of touched on all that, but right. cup holders galore. They're here. They're behind you. They're in the door panel. This door oh. card, whatever you want to call it, is top notch. Yeah. The first off, you can put your arm right where you want it. That's kind of right where you want to cruise. It's perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect. It's, oh, yeah, you're balling. You you're balling. It's, perfect. You yeah. it's right where it should be. And then the door pull is great because you get all this little molly panel. You get all kinds of stuff in there. In fact, so much stuff that I forget stuff in there when we swap. Me too. Yeah. Yep. And I'll then you, you got plenty of room for three bottles down here. You just, you know how often that was full, this was full, this was full. We just had all the family in here. That part I loved. Yeah, me too. That's a big thing. Now, I, there are some negatives. We can't just sugarcoat this. And look, we own this truck. We have no obligation to Toyota to be nice about this. We're just being honest, and that's what we do on the show anyway, is we are never not genuine about this. If there's a problem, we're gonna point it out. Here's one of the problems. Granted, our windows are tinted and the hood's up, I understand. But my head is actually about here, and this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this visor a lot, and granted, the seat can go low and get where I really want it, which is good, but the feeling, Craig, is we, we are in a coffin in this thing. It is claustrophobic in here. It is, so the sill is up high, and the roof comes down like this. Had the Ranger recently, and it feels like a greenhouse compared to this. Right, and that's the problem. Whether it's actually that small in here or not, right. it feels small in here. It, right, and it, that, that, that's the, the trick though. It's not small in here. Right. I'm super comfortable. It just optically feels tight. Chevy Colorado splits the difference. The Frontier is what it's always been, and the Gladiator, the windshield is under your face. So you gotta pick your battles on that. Mono quibble I have, Brian, would be this thing, not this particular thing, but the way you connect to the CarPlay. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, connections here, a little USB-C ports, which are great. They charge right. well. There's no Qi charging. That's fine. Right. I actually don't want Qi charging. Normally, you plug into that, hardwire connect to the CarPlay. It just connects every time. You don't have to think about it, any of this Wi-Fi business. You can't do that here. You can only connect wirelessly CarPlay to this, and yeah. that's fine, but... It's also, as anybody that knows in the modern world, it's a little problematic. There's no backup. But there are times it just doesn't connect, and that's really frustrating when it doesn't. It, it's correct. Uh oh. You hear that? Yeah. I'm constantly, when I'm using this thing, I, I rest my hand here to hit buttons on the, the uh, screen, and that top bezel just creaks and it feels awful. Brian, I got a solve for you. So, what you do is you rest your hand here. And you touch it that way. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not what I do <laughs> in, in, intuitively, but you're right. Fair game. This locker, and look. People ask sometimes in the owner's group, oh, should I get the Sport or the TRD off-road? They cost the same. Get the off-road, dude. It comes with a locker for free. No question about it. And better wheels and tires and not a dumb scoop on the hood. This is the one to get. The problem though, Craig, if you had a Ford product or a Ram product, you could hit a button and two-wheel drive or four high and use that locker whatever the heck you want. You have to be in four low to use this one, and I think that's a major miss from Toyota. I genuinely do think that's a silly thing to do. Just stop doing that. I don't think you have to do it that way. All right, Brian, uh, lots of pros and cons there, outside and inside. I yep. think we need to end on this. Do we regret buying this? Ooh, that's tough. Actually, it's not. I don't, for the sake of our show alone, I don't regret buying this, because like we mentioned on the intro, the community is amazing. It's a brand new product we wanted to test for the show. We didn't want to have it for a week. We wanted to really get into it for you guys. But now that we're done with the build, we haven't really talked about that. We're basically done. We've done the rooftop tent. We've done the roof rack itself. We've done all the lighting stuff. There's nothing else I want to do to this, really. I want to end it with, I don't know that I would buy this for myself today. Mm. That's going to come off harsh to some people. The reasoning why is the things we talked about. I think that for the money that this costs, and now that the market's starting to correct a little bit, $47,000 is a lot of money. And it's not a jab at this, because there's others that cost that much too. I might end up in a full-size truck for my family's needs. And that's a reality of the price part point. Okay, really and is. that's specific to you. It is to me. And for your life, life situation, for yeah. sure. I agree with most of everything you're saying. I will say the reason that the Tacoma 
and this new platform still stays on my shopping list when I look at new trucks out there. Oh, I don't, I, yep. Mm -hmm. Is because you can still get a manual. Man, that is completely true. Not now, that there's anything wrong with this automatic, but because Toyota still gives us the option for a manual. Right, you have the choice. That is huge, yeah. and this is way better than the previous gen Tacoma. There's no doubt. Oh, yeah, yeah. End it on that. I would, here's the deal. Major props to everyone at Toyota. The old Toyota is unownable for me ergonomically. Powertrain wise, it was so poorly geared for what I do, which is a bunch of highway, it just didn't work for me. This so, is sorry, 2JR. Yeah, sorry. This just works. So mm -hmm. that's kind of it. I know we're rambling a lot, but we learned a lot, man. It's been 10,000. I do not regret buying it, but I don't know that I would buy it for me if we didn't have a show on YouTube. That's where I'm at for my use. Fair enough. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you're considering a Tacoma or if you got one and why you got it. Or maybe you did get one. Let us know why you didn't get it. Good point. With that, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.